There was a belief held by the ancient Egyptians that you die twice. The first time is when you take your last breath. The second is the last time someone says your name. Maybe we still hold on to that idea. Because if you look closely, you'll notice that there are names written everywhere. Scratched into school desks. Sprayed onto walls. Carved into trees and etched into stone. If you've ever carved your name somewhere, then you'll know there's a great sense of satisfaction that comes out of it. A reassurance that a little part of you will be left there forever. Everywhere you go, there are these small reminders marked across our world. Saying, I was alive. I was here. Please don't forget about me. Some are more elaborate than others. If I become a parent, secure a future for my children, perhaps I can live on through them. If I become an actor, artist, writer or musician, perhaps my creations will be remembered and inspire others in the future. And I can live on through that. If I discover, invent something or become powerful enough, Perhaps it will change the world. I'll be remembered through history. And I can live on through that. If I dedicate my life to a cause, a belief, perhaps it will grow enough to change society. And I can live on through that. And so, without even realising it, we dedicate our lives to carving our own memorials. A way of keeping ourselves alive. Because what is life? other than the attempt to fight off death for long enough to leave behind something greater than ourselves. Only the one thing we forget, or rather choose not to remember, is that even memorials die. The tree with the carvings will die. Its roots will crumple beneath it and the trunk will fall. Its wood will decompose and the carvings will rot. And there'll be nothing. The carvings in stone will weather and wear down until the words are little more than scratches. When searching through old family photographs, those ones from black and white taken long before you were born, there's always one person you don't know, a face you don't recognise, a name you don't remember. Perhaps a hundred years from now, you too will become a forgotten memory from a family picture, left to fade and gather dust. Because if you try to live on through other people, there's only so far you'll be able to go. There's no way for certain to know how long the human race has left, but current predictions are that humanity has another 10,000 years before we wipe ourselves out. Assuming that humanity hasn't already destroyed itself by war, famine, disease, climate change, nuclear weapons or artificial intelligence, then you will have lived for roughly a quarter of a tenth of 1% of humanity's lifespan. Around one billion years from now, the sun, having entered a state of expansion, will have heated the earth enough to render it uninhabitable to all life. Assuming life on earth hasn't already been destroyed by volcanic eruptions, asteroids, gamma rays, bursts, solar flares or cosmic rays, then you will have been alive for an eighteenth of a hundredth thousandth of one percent of the lifespan of life on earth. Five billion years from now, and the sun's expansion will have reached a state large enough to engulf the Earth. Assuming that the Earth hasn't already been destroyed by orbital distributions or planetary collisions, then you will have been alive for eight millionths of one percent of the lifespan of life on Earth. Fourteen billion years from now, and the sun, having long since exhausted all its fuel, will emit the last of its lights before going dark forever and you will have been alive for four millionths of one percent of the lifespan of the sun. One quadrillion years from now, and the energy holding our galaxy together will start to break down. Its celestial bodies will scatter across space, the disturbance dislodging the last of our solar system's planets from orbit, casting them out into the void of space. And you will have been alive for eight hundredth billionths of a percentage of the lifespan of the solar system. Ten quintillion years from now, and the structure of the Milky Way will have broken down completely. All its matter either consumed by black holes or dispersed into space. The last star will have died, and the universe will go dark. And you will have been alive for eight quadrillionths of a percent of the lifespan of the galaxy. 
Ten duodecillion years from now, and all matter will be gone. Protons will have decayed, atoms will have broken apart. Aside from black holes, the universe will be nothing but desolate space. And you will have been alive for eight, ten untringdillionths of a percentage of the lifespan of the universe. Ten duo trigentillion years from now, and the largest of the black holes will have evaporated completely. The universe will be an empty void. There will be nothing left. And you will have been alive for eight untringdillionths of the percentage of the lifespan of the universe. Which is a number so small that our small brains can't even comprehend how small we actually are. Our lives are overwhelmingly insignificant. Our lives are too small to be remembered. Our lives will all be forgotten. And we are nothing. Okay, maybe, maybe we need to backtrack a little bit. We use the term just a phase to say something isn't as valid or reliable as something that's permanent. But what we're forgetting is that just because something lasts for a short time, doesn't make it any less real. In fact, the term just a phase doesn't even make sense anymore. Because now we've really looked at it, everything is just a phase. Just because you only stayed married for a few years, doesn't mean that you didn't love them any less. Just because you gave up on your plan to start a band after a few months, doesn't mean you didn't want to be a musician any less. Just because you broke your resolution after a few weeks doesn't mean you didn't want to try and be a better person any less. Just because you went back to work only a few days after the funeral doesn't mean you don't miss them any less. Just because the best moment of your life was only a few hours doesn't mean it was any less unforgettable. Just because your existence is only a few seconds of the universe's does not mean that your life is any less significant. Because time doesn't get to define us. And other people don't get to define us either. If no one ever saw Picasso's paintings, would it make his art any less captivating? If no one ever heard Beethoven's symphonies, would it make his music any less moving? If no one ever read Agatha Christie's novels, would it make her writing any less inspiring? If no one ever watched Shakespeare's plays, would it make his performances any less moving? If no one ever remembered your existence, would it make your life any less exceptional? Eight ten untring dillions of a percentage can be damned, because eight untring dillions of a percentage doesn't make watching the first snowflakes of winter any less magical. It doesn't make stubbing your toe on a door any less painful. It doesn't make those roadworks going on outside your house any less frustrating. It doesn't make the first time you see a shooting star any less astounding. It doesn't make the cold shock of learning that someone has died any less traumatic. It doesn't make asking for help, only for there to be no reply, any less lonely. It doesn't make laughing with friends until your stomach hurts any less cherishing. It doesn't make the face of the one you love look any less beautiful. So live a life worth telling, have a story worth sharing, dedicate yourself to something worth remembering. But whether your name is passed down through the generations until the end of humanity, or left behind on the words of an old friend as they visit your gravestone for the last time, does not get to dictate how exceptional your life was. You do.